What up? How's it going? Alright, um... In the last video... <clears throat> I showed you... Um, like... How to cut video... Or... Razor blade video, if you want to be correct. And... Um... I showed you all the tools over here in the toolbar, or the ones I use, and the ones you'll probably end up using. Um, <clears throat> and that was about it, but it was kind of long. And I showed you the amazing shortcut of Shift Z, which you can see is awesome. Okay. Anyways, <clears throat> today. I'm not sure what I'm going to show you. <clears throat> what would you like to know? Well, maybe we'll go over... Um, let's, let's look at the viewer today. How about that? Okay. So, I'm going to... Select one of my... Double click one of my clips from the browser window. <clears throat> okay. And that's going to open it up into my viewer. Well... Um, I'm gonna, re let's move my in and out points to the very beginning, very end of my clip. These were created in previous tutorials. Okay. I'm gonna drag this clip into my timeline. Sweet. Now I'm gonna double click the clip in the timeline. Okay. And what that does is selects my clip in the timeline and puts it in the viewer so we can edit it. Okay, <clears throat> there's a difference if I select it from the browser or if I select it from, double click it from the timeline. There's a difference, there are two different instances and you want to make sure you have the right one selected, otherwise the work you're doing will not be in the right spot. Something like that. So, I have double clicked my clip from the timeline into my viewer and you can see okay it's here now the viewer does several things um, we can animate the video to move across the screen <clears throat> we can do a lot of things but um, we're just gonna go over a couple of those right now so up here we have a couple tabs okay um, video it's gonna show your video big deal um, stereo or it could say mono, mono is basically your audio tab, okay? So you can see, I just have trees blowing in the wind on this clip. That's about it. But anyways, it'll show your waveforms of that audio. And again, remember, remember that um, little keyboard shortcut I told you about? Shift Z. <clears throat> well, we can use that in here too. Shift Z. Now it's going to show me all of my waveforms on that clip, okay? Um, and here we can do a couple things. We've got levels, basically how loud the audio is. Really soft to loud, okay? So these are our levels um, measured in decibels, okay? We also have a pan tool, so it's like panning to the left speaker, to the right speaker, to the center, zero. <clears throat> and... Yeah, that's that tab. Next tab is filters. We can throw audio and video filters on here from our effects tab located in the browser. If you have the standard layout, standard Windows layout, okay? Um, but we're not going to go over the effects yet because that's a whole nother world right there. Um, so let's go to the motion tab now in the viewer and what this does is show you kind of the basic stuff. <clears throat> I kind of went over it in the first video a little bit. Wait, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. So we're going to go over it right now. So what this does is um, it's just all the basic parameters of the video. So first we have scale. You can see, you can see over here in my canvas because we're editing this clip. Remember, it shows me what I'm doing. So I can scale the video up, zoom in. Like scale it down, zoom out. So that's what that does. 
set it back at 100. Okay. Um, we also have rotation. So I'm rotating the clip. I could scale the clip and rotate the clip. I can zoom in on the clip and rotate the clip. So I can do a lot of things. We are going to <clears throat> reset those values by pressing the X. Okay. Um, we also have the center. Okay. That's just kind of moving the video around. So if I click this bar and go over here. So I can move the clip around and scale it and rotate it. Okay. So we can do all of these. I'm going to reset the values by pressing the X. <clears throat> um, you don't need to worry about the anchor point right now. Actually, let's go over it. The anchor point is going to be where the clip scales from and where the clip rotates from. Does that make sense? Probably not. So, right now the anchor point is at 0, 0, which is the center. Let's go to, I don't know, 100 in the X and 0 in the Y. What does that do? Well, you can see, now it scales down to the right because we're going 100 in the x-axis, positive. <clears throat> and you can see that anchor point right here, and I can also move that anchor point around. Let's move it to the corner right here. Now let's scale down the clip. So now you can see it scales down from that corner. <clears throat> so that is what the anchor point does, and also the, the rotation rotates from the anchor point. <clears throat> so now if we rotate, you can see it rotates from that anchor point right there. From the corner of the clip. So that's kind of interesting. Let's reset this. <clears throat> now, I'm gonna close the basic motion, open up crop. You can see we can crop the video, or picture, or whatever. No, I just cut out the glasses right here. We can also feather these edges. Okay, so that's kind of fun. If we're trying to blend multiple images or whatever. I'm gonna reset that. We also have distort. This kind of stretches and squeezes it. Um, usually this is used to fix aspect ratio. <clears throat> so let's say I'm trying to put this HD clip which has a, you know, a wide aspect into a standard definition, which has a, it's pretty much a square, okay? Um, well, to get the settings right and everything, I would, you know, I can adjust the aspect ratio. Um, but, or you can use it creatively and use it for whatever you want. I don't know. We're going to set that back to zero. Opacity <clears throat> is basically how opaque the image is. Um, kind of obvious. Um, drop shadow. Let's, I'm gonna put this clip on the second layer. I'm just dragging it. So, you can still see this clip, <clears throat> right? But, let's lower the opacity. So now you can see it is above that second that first layer, okay? So, in order to see the drop shadow, I'm gonna need to scale this clip down. And now you can see over here, you see this little shadow? I'm gonna turn off all this junk. Okay, so now you can just see my clip. See this little shadow? <clears throat> That's the drop shadow right there, okay? We can how far it is we can rotate it we can make it softer we can lower the opacity <clears throat> so if you're trying to overlay stuff and get some cool junk like that you can use a drop shadow I don't think I ever used that maybe a couple times um motion blur so if you're trying to <coughs> let's say blur your video to make it um, I don't know make it look cool 
you can use motion blur. And what that's going to do, let's go right here. And I'm going to put my scale back to 100. So you can see that this is all blurry. That is caused by the motion blur. You can see. I'm gonna. I'm just pushing the right arrow key. So you can see when there's motion in the image, it's gonna blur it. Um, so that could be a <coughs> a fun effect. And um, so blur just kind of increases or decreases the amount of motion blur. Okay. Um, this is a pretty processor <coughs> processor intensive effect so I mean you can use it it's gonna take longer to render your video out um, the next you have is samples so what motion blur is doing is basically just overlaying multiple copies of your clip um, you can see here's the nose piece right here it's also right here right here and right here <clears throat> there are four copies of it and that's determined by the samples so if you want a smoother motion blur, you want it to look, you don't want to see these multiple copies. You can go down here, erase it. So now it's, see, it's a little smoother, it's 8. Go to 16, you can see it's a little smoother, there's a bunch of copies. 32, you can see, okay, compared to 2. So now, so you can almost use this as a double effect thing, or you can use it as a trippy, I don't know, crazy action scene. And um, it's very processor intensive because if you go up to 32, it's gonna take a while for you to render that out. So that's motion blur. Um, time remap. I'm actually not gonna go over that right now. That's like a whole video in itself. That's a whole different world. Um, I'll make one later on that. But that's a fun thing to play with. You can do some cool effects with that. Um, so that's the viewer.